Does Amazon want to crush their competitors? What do you think? Hey there! Welcome back to our channel. Today, we will go to talk about Amazon Prime and its competitors. But before we step into the video, do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon to never miss any of our videos. Amazon boss Jeff Bezos has a booming, uproarious laugh. Unleashed during workdays, its sonic purse startles people, given it comes from as harsh and driven a taskmaster as exists on the stage of corporate gigantism. Is Bezos' outward giddiness a worrisome reflection of what Bezos is feeling on the inside? Is he laughing at all of us? Is Bezos laughing at the tax collectors, having avoided paying most state sales taxes for years on all the billions of books he sold online, thereby giving him an immediate 6-9% price advantage over brick-and-mortar bookstores that also pay property taxes to support local schools and public facilities? That and being an early online bookseller gave Bezos his crucial foothold, along with other forms of tax avoidance that big companies utilize. Is Bezos laughing at the bureaucratic labor unions that somehow can't get a new handle on organizing the tens of thousands of exploited blue-collar workers crying for help in Amazon warehouses and other stress-driven installations? With a net worth of over $80 billion, why should he worry? Is Bezos laughing at the giant retailers who are closing hundreds of stores because their thin margins cannot withstand Amazon's predatory pricing? Is Bezos laughing at the Justice Department's antitrust division which, before Trump, was studying how old antitrust laws could be used to challenge monopolizing Molochs such as Amazon in the 21st century? It is time for antitrust officials to explore new regulatory actions and modern legislation to deal with today's conglomerates. Is Bezos laughing at Main Street, the USA, which he is in the process of hollowing out, along with nearby shopping malls that can't figure out how to supersede the convenience of online shopping with a convivial ground shopping experience? Is Bezos laughing at Walmart, bestirring itself, which is starting to feel like giant Sears Roebuck did before Walmart's relentless practices caught up and crushed what is now a shrunken, fragile Sears? Is Bezos laughing at the United States Postal Service, to which he has given for the time being much business for shipping Amazon's packages? Bezos has no intention of this being a long-term arrangement. Imagine Amazon with its fleet of driverless vehicles and drones. Amazon is already using part-time workers to deliver its wares. Is Bezos laughing at the Washington Post? which he bought for a song in 2014 while he was holding down a large contract with the CIA and other government agencies. Is Bezos laughing at Alibaba, the huge, bigger than Amazon? Chinese online seller that is trying but failing to get a toehold in the US market? It is hard to match Amazon's ruthlessness on its home turf. Is Bezos laughing at people's manipulated susceptibility for convenience, hooking them with $99 a year for free shipping? Ordering from their computer or cell phone for speedy delivery to sedentary living. Amazon's customers are robbed of the experience of actively going to local businesses where they can personally engage with others, get offered on-the-spot bargains, and build relationships for all kinds of social, civic, and charitable activities. Is Bezos laughing at many millions of Amazon customers who think temporary discounts and minor shipping convenience can make up for the billions of tax dollars Amazon has learned to avoid and the thousands of small business competitors whose closures shrink the local property tax base that supports schools and other essential public services? As Amazon spreads around the world selling everything and squeezing other businesses that use its platform, is Bezos laughing at humanity? His ultimate objective seems to preside over a megatrillion dollar global juggernaut that is largely automated, except for that man at the top with the booming laugh who rules over how we consume everything from goods to media to groceries. Crushing competitors, history shows, leads to raising prices by monopolizers. Even by the anything goes ethical code of the corporate jungle, Amazon.com's alpha male, Jeff Bezos, is considered a ruthless predator by businesses that deal with him. As overlord of Amazon, by far the largest online marketer in the world, with more sales than the next nine US online retailers combined, Bezos has the monopoly power to stalk, weaken, and even kill off retail competitors, going after such giants as Barnes & Noble and Walmart, and draining the lifeblood from hundreds of smaller Main Street shops. He also goes for the throats of both large and small businesses that supply the millions of products his online behemoth sells. They're lured into Amazon by its unparalleled database of some 200 million customers. But once in, they face unrelenting pressure to lower what they charge Amazon for their products, compelled by the company to give it much better deals than other retailers can extract. Lest you think a predator is too harsh a term, 
Consider the metaphor Bezos himself chose when explaining how to get small book publishers to cough up deep discounts as the price for getting their titles listed on the Amazon website. As related by Businessweek reporter Brad Stone, Bezos instructed his negotiators to stalk them the way a cheetah would pursue a sickly gazelle. Bezos' PR machine tried to claim this sneering comment was just a little Jeff joke. But they couldn't laugh it off, for a unit dubbed the Gazelle Project had been set up inside Amazon. This top-level team focused on doing exactly what Bezos instructed. Pursue vulnerable small publishers and squeeze their wholesale prices to Amazon down to the point of no profit, thus allowing the online retailer to underprice every other book peddler. When Stone exposed Gazelle last year in his book, the Everything Store, the project was suddenly rebranded with a bloodless name, Small Publisher Negotiation Program. But its mission remains the same. Today, Amazon sells a stunning 40% of all new books, up from 12% five years ago. It is even more dominant in the digital book market, which is fast catching up to the sales level of physical books and is widely perceived as the future of publishing. Electronic book sales were non-existent just seven years ago. Today, about a third of all books sold are ebooks, and Amazon sells two-thirds of those. Of course, Amazon also owns Kindle, the largest selling device for reading digital books. With his market clout, deep pocket financing, and ferocious price cutting, Bezos has forced hundreds of America's independent bookstores to close and has humbled the superstore book chains that once preyed on the independents and dominated the market. Borders, the second largest chain, succumbed to bankruptcy in 2011. Now Barnes & Noble, the largest brick-and-mortar bookstore, is stumbling. It has lost millions of dollars, closed dozens of stores, shrunk most others, and suffered the embarrassment of its old chairman frantically dumping big chunks of Barnes & Noble stock. Bezos' online empire not only stands alone as the paramount bookseller, but is also the dominant price setter, the arbiter of which titles get the best access, or none, to the biggest number of buyers, the most powerful reviewer of books, the publisher of its line of books, the keeper of an in-house stable of writers, and even the sponsor of a major book prize. He achieved this the old-fashioned way brute force. While it's true that Amazon is innovative, efficient, and focused on customer satisfaction, such factors alone did not elevate Amazon to its commanding level of market control. To reach that pinnacle, Bezos followed the path mapped by Rockefeller and other 19th century robber barons. Through doing all of the above, Bezos has applied his cheetah business model to nearly everything retail. Amazon's massive book dominion is now dwarfed by its annexation of dozens of other markets. Book sales now make up a mere 7% of Amazon's total business. Amazon has already captured more than a third of all online sales with a website that's a phantasmagoric mall of unimaginable size, containing what amounts to hundreds of virtual superstores. In the process, and with the same deeply discounted prices they use to conquer the book business, Amazon has poached millions of customers from neighborhood shops and suburban malls. The chase for cheap has been great for Amazon, but it is proving intolerably expensive for your and my hometowns. Our local businesses lose customers and have to close, local workers lose jobs, and local economies lose millions of consumer dollars that Amazon siphons into its faraway coffers. What makes that even more intolerable is that much of Amazon's competitive advantage has been ill-gotten, obtained by dirty deeds. We are at the end of the video. Well, what do you think about it? Tell us in the comment and do not forget to like and share the video. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We'll catch up in the next video. Till then bye, take care.